Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. It is January the 10th, uh, 2023. We're trusting you had a great Christmas and a wonderful New Year's. Um, my name is Peter. This is Deborah, my wife, and then um, we're here again to speak to you about some things that are going on on the earth today. And uh, what we're seeing today is we're seeing a lot of crazy stuff happening, aren't we? Yeah. A lot of crazy stuff. We're seeing, you know, the, you know, the, we all know about the war with Russia and Ukraine. We know that uh, we see that China is brewing up a war or looks like one with Taiwan and that'll get the, the United States involved. And uh, there's lots of demonstrations all over the world. Uh, the earth is groaning. We're getting volcanoes everywhere we're getting storms where storms really don't show up we're getting rain where rain barely ever shows up deborah and it just seems that the world is is really groaning in in the worst possible way and so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about a few things and and you know what we're seeing here in the in the natural realm we always know we believe anyways that whatever's uh, whatever um, happens in the natural realm, it's affected by the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. So something's happening in the spirit that's causing these natural phenomena to happen. And so, uh, you know, we're going to be talking a little bit about that. And we're, we're going to give a little bit of a prophetic word. And hopefully your ears are on to hear what the Lord is saying today. And uh, Deborah, whereabouts did we leave off the last, the last tape, the last video? Well, we we were speaking um, about uh, reformation mm -hmm. that, that the Lord said His reformation was coming, and you know I think it's important for us as God's people, and especially for you know intercessors and mm -hmm. watchmen on the wall for all of us concerned, mm -hmm. and it's important to, that when we pray. For any situation, regardless what it is, that um, we're able to exercise discernment. Yes. yes. Because you you know we can just kind of shoot into the wind uh, and pray for this, that, and the other thing. But I think it's really important, especially in the hour that we live in, to really press in and to be able to discern, like the sons of Issachar mm -hmm. could discern the signs and the times they yes, were able yes. to discern those things and, and be able to speak that out and uh, you know, to help the people, to guide the people. And, and God wants to help us. God isn't trying to keep um, secrets from us. He's not, you know, doesn't want to see us groping in the darkness. We're not in the darkness. You know, we, we walk in his light mm -hmm. and his light lights up our path. The mm -hmm. word, you know, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so it's it's so important for us to be able to discern in the hour in which we're living in how we need to pray, how we need to partner with the heart of God and and join our faith to his faith yes. and and our purpose to his purpose, not his purpose to our purpose, you know, our agenda to his agenda, not the other way around. And uh, it's important for us to be able to come into agreement mm -hmm. because there's power yeah. in agreement. Yes. Agreement is unity. Yes. So when we unite ourselves with the word of God and we agree with the word of God, then we see things happen. And that's what we all want uh, in our lives, yes. whether we're praying for our family or for the nation or the nations or, or whatever God, you know, puts on our hearts. And so, you know, you know we're, we're making these videos and we are, we're making these videos because God has told us to do this. He's told us to, to um, send out a message, the message that he's put on our heart uh, to release to the body. Um, he may be saying other things to other people, but we can, we're only responsible and accountable to release what he has what he told us to, us to, yes. to yes. release. Jesus yes. said, I only, you know, say what the father says, what I hear father say, and I only do what I see father do. And, and that's the posture and the position that we need to take in the times that we're living in. And so again, it's important. It's important for us to be able to, to hit the mark. And we want to, you know, we know that there's a lot of 
people who they've responded to us and said, you know, wow, this resonates with us. This is what God's been talking to us. It's what we've been praying about in our prayer group. And, and that's awesome. And that's what we want to hear. We want you guys to join with the heart of God to pray what's on God's heart and, and, and to keep doing it, whether anybody else is doing it, whether anybody else is saying it, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we do what the heart of God tells us to do and we release what he says to release. And so um, we don't want to, you know, walk around in confusion and, and um, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 says for everything, there is a season at a time for every matter unto heaven. So under heaven. So what is it? What, what, what's going on in this time and this season and what do we need to zero in on in the heart of God? And so I think that's where we basically left off. Uh, may, can I, can I just add into that? You know, the, the, the first Corinthians 12, and I'm just going to read here uh, from uh, seven on. I'll stop when I'm ready here. Uh, but the manifestations of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the gifts of the spirit has been given to me, but also been given to Deborah, been given to you for the profit of just me or you or for the, no, for all, for, for all of us. Uh, to one is given the word of wisdom. So that means we got to walk in the spirit of wisdom. We can't walk. We can't walk any other way. We, we can't walk foolish. We can't walk with foolish wisdom. We have to walk in the, the spirit of wisdom. And to another, a word of knowledge uh, through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. And it says it is impossible to please God without faith. And so we need to walk in faith. And as we give our faith, oh, God gives us the faith. But as we give that faith out, God increases that faith. He increases our faith. So that why? So we believe more. We believe more. And as he, here's the point I want to make. I want to come down here. He says, to another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, and to another, discerning of spirits. That's where we need to really catch discerning of spirits and prophecy. Prophecy is from God. Discern. We need to discern who is speaking to us. We need to discern the situation. We need to discern the circumstances around us. We need to be a discerning body so that we cannot be led astray here or there. We so we we need to discern. So in through it all, what what the whole just of all of the things that we're saying is about returning, repenting and returning back to God. And and giving him our lives again, once again. And the, and the Lord, you know, He always has moved in appointed times. Yes. And seasons, and we, you know, if we look in Scripture, we see this all through the feasts. Those were His appointed times and seasons, and it's really no different for us today. There are still appointed times, and and you know whether you believe it or not. God still speaks to us yes, he does. through the seasons, through the appointed feasts. It didn't go away. Um, it, it, it pointed, you know, all these things pointed um, to Jesus, but there have been prophecies that are still not fulfilled. And, and the feasts are very key in the fulfilling of those prophecies. And, and so there are still many appointed times and seasons to come, and we need to be aware. I, I just want to read a scripture from, um, from Luke 21 and 2134, and this is Jesus. Uh, he concludes what he's been talking about previous, which I'm not going to you know, read all through that, but he says this. He says, but watch yourselves, mm -hmm. lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation mm -hmm. and drunkenness and cares of this life. Mm -hmm. And that day come upon you like a trap, like a trap. You know, the word weighed down means heavy burden. So Jesus is saying, don't, uh, don't carry heavy burdens. Didn't he say my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if we're feeling weighed down and if we're burdened, we're not carrying his burden. We're, we're carrying, no, we're carrying our own burden and it's weighing us down. It's affecting us. Mm -hmm. Dissipation means self-indulgence, squandering money, 
overindulging in sensual pleasures. Jesus said, don't let your heart be weighed down by that. Drunkenness, excessiveness, intoxication, intemperate, cares, our cares about, you know, visible and, and temporal things. I've never seen so much anxiety, and, and I see this in the church. Forget about the world. I mean, the world is riddled with fear, but guess what? The body of Christ is riddled with fear. Anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. It, it, it's it's terrible. And Jesus said, don't allow this to happen. Mm -hmm. Didn't he say perfect love casts out fear? He's the perfect love. Mm -hmm. So if we fill ourselves with more of him and more of his presence, then it pushes aside. It pushes out fear and it gives fear no room to have havoc in our lives. Mm -hmm. And then he says in verse uh, 35, for it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth, the unjust and the just, but stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the son of man. So he was talking about, he was giving, um, oh, I won't go into it. You guys can read it because we want, we want to move on because I've got, already gone over all this stuff before, but we need to stay awake right? We need to build our core. What is our core? What's our core strength? It is our faith. That's it. You know, we talk about building our core uh, because it is the stabilizer to, you know, our whole body. But what is the stabilization to our whole body uh, as a Christian? It's our faith. It is our faith. So we need to build our core, build it up and keep it built up. Why? Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So, I think that's where we we left off. Um, so as we, as Deborah's going to that place here, you know, our the, again the message is today is about you know part of it is is returning mm -hmm. repentance to repent and to return. And you say, well, you know, why do we need to repent? Well, you know, when we look at the state of the church, the state of the church is not in a good place, and and people say, well, you know, they're doing good things. Yes, they're doing good things. It's it's awesome that we do good things. But when we look at the state of the church, when we look at the leaders of the church, when we look at pastors, we look at, you know, different prophetic people, even the apostles, uh, we look at the different functions and different roles, we see that sin is in the midst of it all. And, you know, Paul gave strict warnings to some of the churches about the way they live. And he wasn't talking, he wasn't talking to people, he was talking to the church and he was talking to the leaders of the church. Mm -hmm. And these leaders of the church were fornicators. Mm -hmm. They they lust, they had lust, they they were adulterers, they they just did whatever they wanted to do because they set their own rules. And that's what's happening to the church today. Wow, you know, nothing has changed in 2000 uh years since Paul. But that's the way the state of the church is today. I'm not saying all churches, but I'm saying that uh, many in the churches today are in that state where well, there, are, there are adulteries, there's there's fornication, there's pornography, there's all kinds of greed, scandals, you name it. It's there. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what God is calling out to the church. He wants us to return, to repent and to return. And that's what Reformation is talking about. And I think we've mentioned this before in some of the other uh, videos that, you know, we we're all praying for revival. Yes. But but Reformation, it might go hand in hand with revival, but they are two different things. And, and let me just read to you what revival is. Revival signifies a renewal of spiritual life, a quickening of the powers of mind and heart. Um, a resur at resurrection from spiritual death. Can, can Ref I, before you, I just sure. want to want to add on what that is. It's like a job or anything else. You're on this job day and day out, day in and day out. All of a sudden, it becomes monotonous, and all of a sudden, it just becomes, you know, an everyday thing. And you lose excitement. You lose that core value of what the company is about. You lose. You lose sight. You lose vision. Okay, you're losing vision. And so what happens is now you start to laze back and relax and, and things get clouded and things get clouded. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's revival is where that comes all back to what was before. Like, you know how they say, go back to your first love, Deborah. Mm -hmm. It's coming back to your first love. It's being revived. Mm -hmm. it's, it's being awakened. 
Reformation. Reformation signifies reorganization, a change in ideas and theories, habits and practices, the act or process of changing religious, political, or societal institutions for the better. And in the past, you know, there were five principles of Reformation which distinguished the reformers from the teaching of Rome. So we're, you know, going back to that time. And it was, it was number one, scripture alone, Christ alone, faith alone, grace alone, Good and God. glory to God alone. And reformation is not something that man decides they're going to do in the church. This is a God idea. And this is, um, brought on it you know it, it's 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 proceeded god precedes it he begins it. it it's an act of god and uh you know in his covenant love he directs his people back to his word and the proper worship of him that's what reformation is because historically whether it's biblical or closer to our time historically we can see the pattern repeat over and over and over again it's yes. human nature yes and where you know even in in joshua we've talked about this before and in judges and you know the people would serve god as long as they had a strong leader to lead them they would serve god but when that leader passed on the people immediately changed course and went back to idolatry That's and it. somebody else had to be raised up and they brought them back again and as long as that person was in charge and that was a godly person you know but we again it it doesn't matter we see it over and over and over and, and, every, over and, over and every time we see it over and over and over and over again it, it becomes more rampant it becomes greater than the mm -hmm. before and and we see a reformation going on in the world we're seeing it right now, a reformation going on, a change mm -hmm. of structure, a change of morals, a change mm -hmm. of ethics. We're seeing things that that would cur curdle someone's socks 50 years ago, what they're yeah. seeing today. And so there is a reformation going on in the world, but it's not a right reformation. They're going very left, very, very left. And they're being too liberal. And it's 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 a, it's 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 really a mockery of the kingdom of God. It's a mockery of the word of God. Everything that's in here is being mocked and being being uh, attacked in every in every sense of the way. The model of the word is being attacked. And what are we doing as Christians? Well, are we just sitting there and allowing the model of the, the 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 Bible to be attacked, or are we loving out? Are we are we are we reaching out? Are we trying to make the difference? Are we the light? that we are called to be and so reformation is really important church it's very very important it's it's a it's a place where where people have laid their lives down to see the the church reform mm -hmm. to grow to go frontwards forward mm -hmm. so reformation is ridding our lives and our churches of mixture and compromise or error in other words friendship with the world and james 4 4 warns us and says mm -hmm. adulterers, adulterers and adulteresses do you not know that whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of god james was not talking to the world no james was talking Church. to god's people why was he saying these things because there were some pretty bad signs that were going on so he was saying you know don't be friends with the world because if you want to be a friend with the world, you're making yourself an enemy of God. And if you want to be a friend of God, then you're going to be an enemy of the world persecution, right? But I want to be a friend of God. I don't care about the persecution. I want to be a friend of God. And so we know that the Lord is, is talking and has been, you know, saying that his reformation is coming. And as, go as church going to church or being, in a gathering, you'll you will you will witness if leaders are not abiding in the word that they're make they're they're becoming the adulterous nation. You'll see the changes from the pulpit. You'll see the changes in the church. You'll see it. It happens. It always comes from the head down, but you'll see it bleed down. You'll see uh, you'll see um, um, uh, lack of vision. You'll see confusion. Sin you, in the camp. You'll see sin in the camp. You'll mm -hmm. see sin in, uh, in the leadership, mm -hmm. and and they'll try to hide it, or they'll try to they'll try to uh, make an excuse for it, or to to say it's okay to do this. But what you're to do is we go back to 1 Corinthians 12. 
discern. You have to discern sitting even in your own congregation, discern what's going around you to make sure that everything that's being said is from the word of God. That is our foundation. That is everything that we stand on is the word is the word. And so when you start seeing that, Deborah, you, you, you'll start seeing the, the, the church decay in every form, in every arena, in every area, you'll see it. Well, we, okay. we've said this before that, you know, for as long as I've been a believer, almost 50 years, I have heard people say, there's no power in the church. Where's the power in the church? Yeah. Where is the power? Where, where in is the, the power in the church? Why isn't there power in the church? What we, we have to ask ourselves some hard questions, uh, you know, beloved, we, we need to ask these questions. We ask ourselves these questions. And, and I think that in the hour that we're living in, we know, we know that desperate times are upon us. And we're starting to even hear worldly people say, you know, wow, the world's in pretty desperate shape yes. and people are aware of it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and these are non-Christians that are saying this and recognizing that, wow, you know, we've never, we never thought we'd ever see a world like we're living in today. And, and it's frightening. It's, it's, um. It's an eye opener. <laughs> it's well, whatever. It's an eye opener, but it, it's alarming is the it word is. that I want it to use. And <laughs> and, you know, we have said this also before that in the hour that we're living in, if if we are not postured in the place of intimacy, yes. in the place of his presence, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible to stand. I didn't say that. The Lord has said that the Lord told us that. And he told us that many, many years ago, but we are seeing it amplified even more now. So his reformation is coming mm -hmm. and it comes with fire to burn and to refine and to separate, to establish our identities. You know, are, are we going to, you know, the Bible says we serve a holy God, that God is holy. When he tells us to be holy because he's holy, it's not a suggestion. No. It's not a, a choice. It's a command. Be holy because I'm holy. Yeah. If you want to align yourself with me, you need to be separate from things that that skew that holiness and that that um, cloud that holiness that keep us from walking in a holy place with God. That's all about our character because that's who God is. And and to be holy means to develop and to walk in sanctification sanctification and develop our character um to become more and more and more like him by the renewing of our minds and so on and so forth so that's sort of a um a repeat <laughs> or a, a a prelude a prelude yeah <laughs> so you know there's there's been a lot of things that yeah that have taken place since you know we did our last video and we're going to share some uh, some dreams and some um, some visions that that Peter has had, and some words that the Lord has has given to us since whenever our last video was in yeah, December. December second, I think it was the second or the fourth. Yeah. So um, the fourth. Do you want me to read it yes, and then you yes, can explain it? Sure. Yes. I, I know my it's my are, writing, right? Yeah, it's her writing. I can't read her writing. Sometimes I can't even read my own writing. So <laughs> bear with me. So this was December the 22nd, 2022. And this was a dream that Peter had. So he in the dream, he was praying in the valley. And we've told you guys before, the valley is the place. We live in the Fraser Valley in British Columbia. And we go to the dikes out on the farm in the farmland which used to be a natural lake and they built dikes uh, when they came here and it's now this beautiful lush farmland so we go and we, and you know people walk they ride horses they ride bikes they do all kinds of things out on the dike it goes for miles and miles and we have a place that we go to and that's our prayer place so often peter when the lord speaks to him um you know he speaks to us in a language that we understand so once again when he was in the dream, he was praying in the valley during the, the time of the crazy snowstorms. We had really some, I don't know, we had a couple of weeks where we had unusually uh, 
winter weather. Crazy winter weather. We don't normally get that kind of weather where we live in British Columbia. But it was it was nuts. We I think we were snowed in for like three days. And this one day we went out. And so anyway, he was praying in the valley uh, in his dream during this storm. And uh, he, we asked the Lord what was happening. And um, no, actually, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me back up. Uh, we were in the valley. We had gone out to the valley. We couldn't get to the dike because the snow drift was like four feet deep at, in the road. And so we sat there and, and we prayed. So while we were praying during the storm, we asked the Lord what was happening. It, it, it seemed to us that everything had become very, very quiet. Now we talked with you guys about, you know, the, the uh, full moon about December great 7th, the great happening that was coming, the cup and all of that. And then, you know, whether we were, I'm not sure what we were expecting, you know, the Bible says that we, we see in part, or we know in part, and we prophesy in part. And often, uh, you know, God will, will build and he'll add and he will reveal as time goes on prophecies and words and, and dreams that are given to us. And so that's what we have been uh, experiencing. And so we were just asking the Lord, we would go to the valley and it would be like dead silent. Dead. Yes. We would feel no activity, and yet we knew, we knew there was activity, and yet there was such a peace. stillness. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was a peace, but it it was still. Yes. It was like everything had come to a stop, and and we were questioning the Lord, and we asked him about that train that that Peter had seen a number of times, uh, the Reformation. We we asked him about. Um, you know, the timeline and, you know, we were maybe expecting a, a natural uh, sign around the timeline, you know, of the 7th of December when we were talking to you guys. If you don't know what we're talking about, go back and watch the other videos. So as we soaked that night, Peter got a vision and and I'm going to tell you the vision and he's going to explain it to you. So in the vision, first of all, he saw um, two words and he saw the word question with a line and then he saw the word answer then he saw a grave and out of the grave he saw people started to come out of the grave first a hand and then a body and then a number of bodies people were coming out of their graves and then he saw you know that train that we talked about originally he saw this time the end of the train he saw the last two cars and the caboose of the train and then there was another there was some words in hebrew again which we had to you know we've explained what those words were in, we, in we had to research videos. but this is what the word said it said do not be dismayed it is coming and then peter saw a trumpet and there were notes coming out of the trumpet. It was being sounded. And then there were trees all blown down. And then there was a wall. And on the other side of the wall, there was evil. And the evil was pushing against this wall. And it was trying to break breach. through the wall. It was trying to breach the wall, but it couldn't get through. And then he heard the scripture, Psalm 30 and 5. And it says this. For his anger only lasts for a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. And that word night means temporary. Yeah. So weeping will temporarily be there. But joy. But joy, you know, eternal restoration, yeah. it's going to come in the morning. So if you want to explain then yeah. what, what you were feeling or what you were um well, we we we've been praying. We've asked people to pray over this situation that's called the Great Happening, and and um, as we've been praying, we've noticed, you know, that it seems to be uh, like Deborah was saying, it's very quiet in the in the out in the front lines and stuff. Yeah. But in the natural, in the natural, it seems quiet. Even it, it's so quiet, even the animals are startled by the quietness, you know, kind of thing, right? But, you know, I, I see, you know, the the train, uh, the, the people from the grave to me was, that was people waking up, coming out of the grave, 
It was it was a that prayer that we've been praying and others have been praying that people are we've been saying arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And if that's that's speaking to the church that we need to arise and shine. We need to rise shine for the light has come. And the glory, it's the glory of God that's on us. And we, we're starting to see people awakening now. They're starting to awaken. Well, so They're, what does that mean to you? Arise, shine, for your light has come. Well, we, we're, we're sleeping. We're not, we're, not, we're not standing at our posts. We're not shining our light. We're not, we're not displaying the glory of the Lord. It's, it's, and even though it's, it's, he says it's upon us. And we're, if we're not eager inside to to get out of our sleepy our sleepy or slothfulness then then you know what we're asleep we need to awaken and we're starting to see that awakening taking place and they're rising from their grave and they're taking their positions on the wall and they're beginning to pray and they're beginning to intercede on behalf of this great happening and what's going on and i believe that's holding it back i believe but the remember the, the word says i can't hold it back for long but I will hold it back. And so it's it's holding it back. And so that's what I believe is happening is there's more people now as they're 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 gathering, they're starting to take their positions and they're praying and 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 and, and they're rising and they're shining that light, the glory of God. It's because it's on us. It's it's activated. God wants to activate his light, his glory upon us he wants that activated and if we don't do anything about it we don't apply our faith to that we can never activate that kind of uh that, that kind of move so the, it's it's a raising from the grave what do you got there deborah you're gonna no, no. Read it? okay and so then then i saw the the two last cars in the, in the caboose it means the the train has the train has come it's here the train is here and the first the first cars the engine the thrust of the the train is 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 come and it's and it's going it's cutting into where it's supposed to be going it's traveling and it's going but right now we're in the, it's it shows to me we're at the midst and or at the middle or plus the end of what's about to take place so you know where the word says down below it says be not dismayed it's coming be not dismayed it's coming so i believe the train is showing that the train has come the train is moving and now the train is coming to the end so what whatever is about to happen is about to happen well i think that that if we're talking about reformation we're not looking for an event no no we, we are no, looking no. for a, you know what is begun what yes. god's wanting to do in his people to bring things in the body of christ uh back the way he wants it run i believe it's a starting point mm -hmm. And then, so then the trumpet to me is the, to me, it's, it was the sound of the trumpets was, was the trumpets of, of angels, the trumpets of the heaven. And it was, uh, it was so um, powerful. It was blowing trees down. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, I was, I'm yeah, at your it drawing. was so powerful. The notes were blowing yeah. trees down, but it was creating a wall and evil was trying to breach that wall, but it couldn't. Because the 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 worship, I guess I would say, let's call it the worship of God was so great, so grand, it had it had absolutely nothing on it that the evil could not even come against but, it. But trees represent our lives. Trees, yes. trees in scripture, you know, they, they represent us. And um and and the fact that you know the sound that was being released from the trumpet, which was a heavenly sound. It was blowing over trees. Now, you know, was it blowing over um, things in our lives? Would it, it, does it mean humility? People were being, you know, they were going face down. It, it, it could mean a number of things. Um, but that God was releasing a sound that was causing people to go face down. Things were falling over. And the enemy was trying to come against that. Sorry, I won't take over. No, and, no. And, no so... So the evil was trying to breach, but couldn't, couldn't, it didn't have enough power, enough. It was trying to interfere with was, what was going on. It, right? Yeah, it was, it was, but it couldn't interrupt. It couldn't interfere yeah. with it at all. And what, what's the wall, do you think? Well, I, I think the wall is, it, it's a protection. It's a guard. It's, it's something that, that is, it's like I walls, walls were always to keep people in or keep people out. 
So I think it was to keep the evil back, holding it back for uh, uh, so, for that so time. I think it's the I think it's the declaration of uh, yeah. God's people yeah. praying yeah. that is holding yes, back. Absolutely. Because remember, the Lord said that He was going to hold back evil for a period of time. Yes. Remember? Oh, yes, yes. And yes. and so you know, the Lord just has been showing us in all of these little visions and pictures and things that um, uh, are you, what are you doing? Are you, <laughs> I'm, I'm, he's doing something love, with his hands. I love, I, love I don't you. know what you're doing. I don't know your I sign so, language. I so love you. Sign oh, you're, language. Oh, you're telling me I've, I'm. Yes. That we have time. Oh, okay. Yes. This is our secrets out. <laughs> he's trying to do this underneath and tell me I've got. Anyway, so I, this is what I've got. So we'll try to wrap yeah. it up. So okay. So what about the scripture, Peter? Weeping man. Can, can, can you can you read it again? For his anger only lasts a moment, but mm. his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Well, to me, it shows that there's and you heard that in the yes. Room. To me, it's it's telling me that it's showing me that there's some difficult times ahead. Mm. And it's going to cause some weeping at night. There's some difficult times ahead. And weeping doesn't mean it could be you know, you're afraid or there's fear, but weeping could be your mourning, your 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 um your um dying to say you're yeah, you're grieving over something, yeah. you're grieving. And, and it might be also you standing in the gap and you're grieving, grieving, grieving. Or, you know, and you're, but you're still in the midst of all of this. You're not, you're not pro, uh, immune to this, what's going on. But the Lord says, mm -hmm. it's okay, because when the morning comes, mm -hmm. there'll be joy. Mm -hmm. And joy is everlasting. It's eternal. It's mm -hmm. not something that, that it, joy can only be really true. Joy can only be found in the kingdom. You know, yeah. when, when the bottom line comes, when, when the, when the end times are finally here, and it's the very end in the place where, there's two places to go. And one, there'll be a place where there's joy, mm -hmm. uh, peace, uh, goodness. It, there'll be love. There'll be, there'll be, it'll be a wonderful place. And the other place will have none of that. Mm -hmm. It'll be absent. Everything will be absent of that. So that's a place I don't want to go to. Well, Anyways, I think a, a, as we close uh, this video, and, and we're going to continue with another video, but we're going to close this one off. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the the one thing that we want to continually reinforce and uh, repeat over and over again is that, um, you know, some people think this is a doom and a gloom message. No. I don't see it that way this at all. This is encouraging. This is very encouraging. I, I see a loving father warning his children of the dangers of wandering too far away from him it's it's you know i always refer to parents if mm -hmm. you are parents you know what i'm talking about you don't want if your kids to wander off. if you've ever lost a child in the store like we have and i'm sure many can attest to that oh, yeah. it's the worst feeling. feeling in the world i can't even describe the feeling other than utter terror. despair and terror and um, and God does not want us to wander. So as any good parent would do, you would warn your child of impending trouble and or impending danger. Anything. You you would do anything. And to so keep them from harm. You know, and, and sometimes we have to discipline our children because our children don't know any better. That's how that's how they learn. And so God, you know, disciplines his children to teach us and to bring us into a good place because, you know, John 10, 10 says that the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come that they might have life and life more abundant. That's his heart. The enemy's heart is to steal, to kill and destroy. His heart is to give life abundant, more life more abundant. and whatever mm -hmm. that entails every good and perfect gift comes from the father of light. And so he wants us to walk in light and he's coming and he's saying to us, you know, there are some things in your lives that need to straighten up people. Um, there are some things that you've allowed in your life that maybe you don't even recognize shouldn't be there, but he's warning us that, that in what's coming, he has told us repeatedly, Keep your eyes fixed on me and you'll be okay. 
you're still going to go through stuff, but you'll be able to navigate through it if you press into me, if you posture your heart before me, if you seek my face and and worship me and pursue intimacy with me. That's not doom and gloom. That's not That's hellfire and brimstone. But you're going to hear, you're going to hear strong words come from the prophets and and uh, the leaders of God that are that are walking in an intimate place with God, not people who are walking on the peripheral, not people who are seeking their own kingdom and seeking their own power and and whatever it is that they're running after. And many in the body of Christ, like Peter said, many in the body of Christ are doing exactly that. That might, you know, prick some people, but you need to be pricked. That's it. You know, that needs to happen. Don't get mad at us and don't get mad at God. Come and repent or at least, at least search your heart. Yeah. At least ask God to show, to shine, you know, the, the light, his light on areas that, that are out of sync, that need the plumb line brought back to it. So that we can come into that perfect alignment. This is not about religion. It's not about control. It's not about any of those things. This is about a loving father who desires loving relationships with his children and and wants us to, to have the same desires for him. So do you have something to, to yeah, I just want to read this? With? I just want to read this. Uh first Corinthians 11. Paul says, Paul says, it, 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 I'll, I'll paraphrase it, but make sure you go to the scriptures. I'll, I'll paraphrase it. Paul says, everyone should examine their heart. Mm -hmm. Examine the heart from what? What, Deborah? Examine your heart from what? What would you examine your heart to for? To make sure that their our heart is right with and pure with God, with the Lord, yes. with the Lord. Examine your heart, and he doesn't say do it once in a while. He doesn't say do it once a week. What does he say? Daily. 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 Every day you should find a place in time and you should say and examine your heart. Where do you stand with God? Where do you stand with him? Where Where is it? Well, and, that's, it's, it's, and that's not a fear. No, it's not a fear, but that, it's what it's doing. That's not a fear thing. It's, it's, it's see, to see if you have drifted. To see if you've drifted apart. Like if uh, the, it says, press towards the mark. Have you drifted any? And if you examine yourself, you probably would see that you have drifted. And so what the drifting is, is you want to now take your course and course back to where you were, back in that straight and narrow. That's what you want to do. You, you're, as you're examining your heart, making sure your heart is right, you're getting back into that little place, that straight and narrow. And that's, that is what the Lord wants us. Why? Because, because the time is drawing near people church anyone who's listening the time is drawing near that if we don't keep our bearings we don't keep our head on our shoulders and keep it right and we don't keep our heart right then we can be sucked in by the 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 storms of life and i'm telling you they're out there they're out there everywhere you go you can't say a word anymore without offending someone it's just it's just it's almost impossible now to keep ahead of all the things that are going on. You can't. But here, one thing I can say is that if you keep your head in with the Lord, you keep your eyes fixed to him, it will make your life much simpler, much easier. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, so what we're asking, we're gonna we're going to stop here and we're gonna continue on to the next video because we don't want to make them too long. But oh as as we stop here. I want to just say this. We are sounding an alarm. And the alarm is, mm -hmm. people, we need to repent. We really do. We really need to look at ourselves. Pastors, you need to look at yourself. You need to look at where your mind is. Pastors, I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to people, period. You need to know where is your mind? Where is your heart? You need to say, am I doing things that I shouldn't be doing? Do I feel conviction? Well, that's the Holy Spirit telling you, return, mm -hmm. repent and return. The, our message today is, church, you need to repent and return. It's not about going back to 
the Middle Ages and dress up like the Middle Ages and do the Middle Age thing. No, we're in the 21st century. But it means that we keep our heart, heart right. Mm -hmm. We keep our motives right. We are moral. Mm -hmm. We have ethics about us. We are godly people because we are going to be the light that will bring them to Christ. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, then we cannot shine that love mm -hmm. and we cannot bring them to Christ. And it won't be a pretty place for those who don't come to Christ. So we want to end with a prayer and then we'll we'll um, go to our next video. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Father, um, we love you. We really do love you. And Lord, we take this time now to examine our hearts. And, and Lord, we have seen, some of us have seen, Lord God, where we've erred and we've gone astray and we want to repent. We want to repent and we want to return back to our first love. We want to come back to that place. We don't want to miss out on the wonderful, beautiful things that you have for us and that we can walk in, com in communion with each other mm -hmm. for eternity. And so, Lord God, um, today, Lord, um, I turn my life around. I turn my life around. I repent of all the things that have uh, been contrary to the word of God. And I repent of those things. And I ask you, forgive me. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to return to you. I, I come to return to you. I come humbly to you, Lord God. But I know you will be like the prodigal son and the, and the, and the father. Mm -hmm. You will greet us with open arms. And you will put a ring upon our finger and a robe around us. And you will mm -hmm. serve the fat calf, fattest calf for us, Lord God. So, Father, I pray that in the name of mm -hmm. Jesus. And so, Lord, uh, so I ask the people today. You know, really examine your hearts. Mm -hmm. Be really serious mm -hmm. about your life. No one else is going to be serious for you. Be serious. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, we'll see you next video. And God bless you. And um, we love you very, 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 very much. And the Lord loves you. Amen. Amen.